Welcome to Ear Biscuits. I'm Link. And I'm Rhett this week at our respective tables of varying lighting in our own homes. We're going to be talking about relational dynamics during quarantine. I'm telling you, man, we, but we're going to open a can of, well, not a can of whoop ass. I'm talking about, it, this is like, what's it? A can of worms. That's what I was thinking about. How many cans are there? Hey, listen, there's whoop I, ass, I can open a can of whoop ass. You want me to come over and whoop your ass? Because <laughs> I'd I, like to I, see I, you I, try. I, I need to whoop somebody's ass right I'd, now. I'd love to I see mean, you come over here I, and try. I, <laughs> talking because about relational what? dynamics, there's a couple of times I'm just, I'm just walking around my house and I just like, I just, I just, I just, I just, I just, just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes I've hugged my kids and it's turned from like an affectionate hug into like, how hard can I squeeze them before they start to panic? <laughs> Uh, I don't uh, know if that's a good thing to admit, but I mean, it's not like Lando's well, eyes. My wife was whispering to me. Anything. What are you whispering about? If she's going to talk, tell her to speak up. Yeah, see, this, this is, is a what show. Happens. See, this is it. Shepard's We're doing on a his show. call with his teacher, and I'm doing this. There's tension in the air, man. I mean, that's what quarantine's all about. It's about tension in the air. And <laughs> there's whoop ass, <laughs> there's worms. And there's what else? I mean, is there an is there another can? I, I've opened cans of knowledge for people before. Oh gosh. <laughs> Give me a break, man. You know what? It's expired. I'm gonna open a can of knowledge on you. That's not one. <laughs> nope. We're still at two. That's not one. Well, I thought you were gonna say a can one. of beans, but that's that's too oh, yeah. literal. Too literal. Yeah, sometimes I do go to cans of beans. I have been trying to do dry beans on my own, but I do have cans as a backup. I, I, the interesting thing about cans of beans is that I find myself trying to get my beans to taste as good as the canned beans. <laughs> right. It seems that that, <laughs> that is the goal of every bean recipe is just to taste as good as canned beans because those people at Bushes, man, they figured it out. Dude Perfect is selling their own beans. When you found out about that, did it make you mad? Yeah, it was like a it was like a trick shot to the heart. <laughs> it made me a little mad. I was like, "Hold on. We should be selling beans." Does this mean we can't sell beans? I think we should undercut Dude Perfect. We should we what's it called when you're like when you back in when someone goes up for a rebound and you back into them and then they fall? Let's use their terminology. Let's boxing out. Let's box them out on their own beans. Let's buy their beans I, I, and that's undercut a difficult them. Okay, you're, you're 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 using you've got like three analogies going now. I'm on, see. I, don't I think, also have tension, and now look at me. I'm taking it out on Dude Perfect. The people on the internet that are like the 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 ones that invite the least amount of ridicule. All of a sudden, <laughs> I'm picking a fight with Dude Perfect. What? This is what's <laughs> happening. I, I mean, I've been looking forward to this conversation because Rhett, I look forward to our, our ear biscuit every week because it's a yeah. It's one of a handful of lifelines that I have and Ear Biscuiteer listening. If you feel like this show is a lifeline in this quarantine, don't put so much pressure on us. But I'm glad to hear it. But I'm, I'm trying to figure out, there's another part of me that I think it could be therapeutic to get this out. But I got, there's some stuff in this past week, a little bit more that, I don't know, as we start to talk about relational dynamics in my home, <sighs> I, I, I just might, I guess I'm going to go there. I think it, I think it'd be, I, I'd like to get your, I'd like to get, I'd like to verbally process. I'm, I'm, well, I think we're, you don't I have think to we're open both going to go there. Knowledge. No, I think we're both going to go there. You and can I open think a that's can where, of you know, ear, I, okay. open a can of listen. Ear cans, that's just another name for it, big headphones. Um, I, uh, I think we're both going to go there. I think this is about, you know, this is a little uh, commiseration, both with each other, but also with the mythical beast. And it's interesting because I see people talk about like, oh, it was cool when you guys talked about movies because it was lighthearted. And, or when you talked about hobbies during quarantine, it was lighthearted. And uh, I needed that. And I'm not saying this is not going to be lighthearted, but we're going to, we're all processing together. Yeah. Um, and so 
it's going to be what it's going to be. Whatever kind of cans need to be opened up, whoop ass, knowledge, beans. Ear. What was the other one? Ear cans. Cans of, listen, cans of listening. <laughs> but even before that, uh, worms. Worms, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the originals. One of the original cans. Yeah, that's right. Now uh, we're going to spray those cans down, and then we're going to wipe those cans down, and then we're going to move them to a disinfected area, and then we're going to proceed to open them, one by yeah. one. Um, before we get into talking about, uh, well, actually, I mean, this is a relational dynamic. I mean, I think I want to start by talking about my relational dynamic with the most important member of my family, and that is Barbara. Of course. And uh, our, uh, our relational dynamic has changed during this time. Uh, Barbara is, mm-hmm. first of all, I think Barbara is confused that I'm around so much. Yeah. And I, th- and I think that um, I've lost a little of my spark for her. Oh. I mean, one of, the things that, one, one of the things that I've noticed is that, I mean, I hate to admit this, but it's very true. My wife is the favorite of Barbara. In fact, Barbara loves my wife so much that she will, the thing that she's doing right now is, you know how I, I get down on the floor every single morning to do my back stretching routine? Of course, yes. And traditionally, that has been Barbara's cue to get down on top of me. She doesn't do That's that That's what anymore? she does. Well, now what she does is when I get on the ground. Now, Barbara sleeps at the foot of the bed most, of the, most nights. Barbara stands up, looks at me, and then goes and starts licking Jesse's face. So it's like, oh, now I need to go have human contact, but why jump down there with that bearded maniac when I could kiss this clean-faced woman? And Have you talked to her about it? That's what's happening. Have I talked to Barbara about it? Yeah. yeah. I, well, I begin to beg. I have a thing that I do where I start going, oh, oh, And what oh, does she do? Barbara, oh. She looks at me, and then she begins to nestle into Jesse even more. Oh, she's afraid. Well, there, she, there she is right there. She just came over here to look. She's like, yeah, yeah, you responded to me right now? You want some love? You can't have any. Jade, come here. Jade, I'm having a similar thing with Jade because and if you... If you watched our Mythical Society car vlog, we do those once a month, when, well, and before all this happened. I shared that like Jade is not sleeping in the bed with me anymore because she would get up in the middle of the night to drink water, and she would only do it if she had an escort, which would be me. But it would wake up me and Christy. So, um, and sometimes she would need to go to the bathroom. So we started crating her in order to retrain her to go all night without food or water or peeing and then just do it in the morning, Jade. Um, But then over this break, she started sleeping, it's not in the crate, but with Lincoln. And I'm really starting to feel jealous because we're letting the kids sleep in later. So like it's 1020 right now, Lincoln got up like, 20 minutes ago, which meant Jade didn't get up until 20 minutes ago. I don't know if she's peeing in his bed or what. Now, he just took her out. but So, like, all that quality time I used to have on my dog, I, I really miss Jade, and I kind of want to put her back in my bed. But now Lincoln is starting to say that he's the favorite. The dynamics are changing here, even with the dogs. Well, I, I think it's representative of, of larger things that are happening. But one of the concerning things that's happening with Barbara is, uh, of course, you know, Barbara is a, a small, bushy dog. I don't know if that's the correct term, technical term, but you know, she's got a lot of hair. That's a breed. She yeah. needs to be groomed. And she's got some, I don't remember what she is, but she's a mutt, but she's got something in her that she would, her hair would grow very, very long. Mm hmm. Like even like down to her the floor. Whoa. But she's got like some poodle in her, so it's curly. So I don't know what would happen, but it would fro out and it would be very big. So she, she gets regularly groomed, but of course, nothing like that. I mean, regular grooming is not happening for me, as you can see, and also for anyone in this house, including Barbara. Now, 
I don't care. Yeah, me too. And I don't care that she's got dreadlocks and there's other things happening in her hair. And it's like, I, I was just like, let it, let's let it ride. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And we'll, we'll fix this at, at the end of this. Gives us something to look forward to. But Jesse wasn't having it. So she bought a, like a grooming kit on Amazon. At Clippers? Yeah. And uh, proceeded to begin to shorn our dog and uh let me just say i'm I, i'm I, I think it's worth paying the groomers to get your dog groomed based on what barbara came out looking like there was just Can something you get about her? i want to see what she looks like well it, it 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 was really it only lasted for about 48 hours it's like now you can't really tell oh, but it wasn't that short it, it, she, she did she did something with the like the groomers, they know about balance, right? So you've got like, she's got these furry legs and they're kind of supposed to sort of maintain their width as they go down and then maybe even flare out a little bit at the end. It kind of gives a dog sort of like, it looks like they got sort of a bait. These are things you don't ever think about until you do it wrong. So Jesse went with like a tapered jean look. Oh. Like an 80s tapered jean look. She's she, Jesse is like she's watching got me some talk pegs. about right now. She, she got the peg and, pants. It gave Barbara like a top heaviness. It looked like she was about Teetering? to tip over at any time. Yeah. And I was like, how's this dog even standing up straight? And uh, it's a hair and for, illusion. For, I also realized how shallow I am because I didn't like Barbara for about 48 hours. I was like, you're not cute anymore. <laughs> she I knew mean, it. The reason too. I like you is she because knew you're so it, cute. Man. Now and you also know in why. the back of my mind, yeah, she's not, she's not getting on top of me in the morning anymore. So oh, chicken and the egg. Oh, but one of the things that, we, we thought about it at the time when the grooming was happening. We were like, I think there's something with the anal gland. I know they do something with the anal gland, but, I mean, of course, we're not going to do that. They express it. So, That's what yeah, they, they do. they express it. And uh, I was like, well, of course, we're not going to go there. But the other night, we're all watching television together, and Barbara comes in the room, and we immediately notice the smell of... It's like somebody took one of those bottles of fish oil that you, vitamins, you know, take take for your cardiovascular system, mm -hmm. and they left it out in the sun for like seventy two months, and then they brought it inside, and then they opened it up. That's yeah. what it's, and I and I figured that that wasn't what had happened, and so I just said, "Is that the anal gland?" It is. Yes. And then Jesse proceeded to grab Barbara and just slightly lift her tail for a moment. Oh. And uh, she confirmed it was indeed the anal gland. Now, typically, so then, they'll, they'll, they'll do the butt scoot, and that's also a sign that the anal glands are not properly expressing. Yeah. Well, and, and after I went expressed. on YouTube, YouTube has started looking into this. Small dogs especially, you, you know, our dogs are not natural. Our dogs are so far from the just natural canine species by this point that there it comes with some complications, including they need humans there to do things like express their anal glands yeah. on a regular basis in a way that large dogs apparently don't need as much. And so I... Um, yeah, because typically in the wild, because I've, I've, I was curious about this like bef uh, a year ago. And because uh, I never took Jade to the groomer, and I was and that helped me justify doing it because I was I was curious, but I didn't want to like put my fingers where my research was. You know what I'm saying? But I yeah. found out that like not to get graphic, but when a when a when a dog that's functioning properly poops, it expresses the anal gland as like part of that. And yeah, I, so the poop will stink even more. And I don't I don't um, I don't care to know exactly why. It probably has to do with some sort of like aroma communication, but it's abhorrent to me. So I'm done talking about it. But go well, ahead. I'm not because I yeah. haven't finished. You haven't. Um, so I watched I watched the YouTube video and it was so, it looked so easy. The woman was like, get a pair of gloves and uh, just sort of, you know, you sort of just put your fingers on each side of the anus and you squeeze and pull at the same time. 10 o'clock and, and 2 o'clock? She showed, I think it's more like 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock, but she said... This is what she was like. She showed on like a paper towel or something like this is what will come out and it will smell awful. Oh. 
And uh, so we gave Barbara a bath, <coughs> a bath and yeah. I proceeded to put on the only gloves I had, which were dish gloves. I reached in there. Hold on. Before, Barbara seemed a little. Before you gave her a bath or after? Uh, no, before. Okay, good. Like during. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. She was, in, she was in the sink getting ready to get wet. Um, Barbara looked at me like, well now. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, you're pinching this is her new. anus. And, uh, but she also didn't seem to mind too much, which I guess it was like, oh, you also do this. I've had this done regularly by that lady at the groomer, but you also <laughs> do this? Okay. Lots you, of new things happening. Um, familial nothing came. Nothing came out. And I think that what we concluded at the time was, well, she, she must have already expressed herself. Yeah. You know, earlier. That's what happened when we were watching television. Now, I, I said I'm not going to talk about it. Just to interject my experience here, I was experiencing the same. Jade was doing the scooting. I gave her a bath a week ago. And I remembered as I was giving her a bath, she's been scooting. I need to, I need to try this. And it just so happens You that need to try scooting? <laughs> Eric, the guy who used to be our friend, who then we fell out of contact with, and then he started texting us about our Lost Years podcast. After that, he yeah. sent me a text, and he was like, this is what I'm doing today, or something. And then it was a, like a wiki how picture of expressing a dog's anal glands. Everybody's having mm -hmm. to figure this out. And that image popped into my head, and I thought it was 10 and 2, but that's when you're driver's ed. And you know what? I just reached under there and I gave it a little pinch and I didn't even have on gloves. Oh, God, what, why? Because at sometimes my Nana comes out in me and my Nana, you know my Nana, she's like, she, sometimes she doesn't care. Like she'll walk around naked or she'll like, um, she'll do the walking farts and she doesn't apologize for anything. She'll teach, you know, when she taught me how to blow. What does it have to do about Touching little bubbles, your dog's butt she would chew up the gum, poke her tongue through it, and then take it out of her mouth, and then put that slot where her tongue was over my tongue, and then yeah. tell me to blow. And that's how I learned to blow bubbles. She was she's grew up on the farm. She doesn't care about stuff like this. You touch it, touch a dog's anus, and then you're washing the dog. Just immediately wash your hand. And that I just did that. And I know that seems out of character for me, but I'm like, screw it. We're in wash mode. Let's go for it. Hold on. But did anything come out? I couldn't tell. No well, I certainly could tell in that YouTube video, and I couldn't. T but so nothing came out with Barbara. But then, literally, as we were getting ready to record this, thirty seconds before we re press record, Jesse was standing right over here and said, yeah, "I'm smelling it again." So I think the fact if you can smell it, it's a problem, and uh, I think yeah. I'm going to have to go in again. You're going to have to go in <sighs> deeper. It's that you need a deeper oh, pinch, and don't wear gloves. You really need to. You really need to. Bond with your dog. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Anyway, so that's, uh, you know, re relationships are changing. Yeah. Conventions are changing. I mean, if I can figure out how to do this, are we going to take, you know, our groomer's going to go out of business. My groomer's not going to go out of business because this isn't something I want to make a regular thing. This is something I want to do only in times of desperation. It might be like a Dr. Pimple Popper thing. You might experience some pleasure associated with a victory. With success, don't don't count your chickens before the can opens. You might like oh it. Gosh. Okay, we're going to talk more about relational dynamics, and I don't think we're going to talk any more about anuses, dogs or otherwise. Uh, but first, we're going to talk about these mugs. Mythical.com is the source for everything you need to express your personal mythicality. I mean, we have a Could connection. you not use the term express? Oh. Just don't use the term express. <laughs> Let's just not that use the term totally express totally subconscious. For the rest of this. Uh, I feel like we when have a When you look at our mugs, don't think about your anus. You know, we're connecting through this conversation. Um, I feel like you're a part of it, even though you're pretty quiet. And you'd feel even more a part of it if you were drinking tea or coffee or any beverage you want. It could be like anal grand Excletions for all I care. <laughs> anal <laughs> grand you just said anal grand excletions. <laughs> that sounds like that's a great band name. That's how Locke used anal to talk grand when he was a toddler. Excletions. Excletions. <laughs> he would he would change words like that, right? Uh yeah. He still does. From no, time to time. Mythical.com. Uh, yeah. yeah, get your mugs. 
connect with us, make it a complete embodiment experience. Wear the shirts, wear the necklaces, wear the perfumes, wear everything we sell, and then sip from the things we sell. Okay, before we dive into this, I will say uh, we're going to be talking about this from the from the standpoint of people who are in a family uh, and trapped with them. <laughs> and I know that there are a lot of single people who have maybe the opposite problem, which is uh, no one to connect with. And so there's, I think there's a loneliness. That's not something that we can speak to personally at this point. But I do want to recognize there are a lot of people in that particular situation. I'm glad you're bringing that up. Um, yeah, because I think there's going to be, there's going to be some, some complaining coming from us. Um, and I don't know, maybe if you, if you're in a different situation, m maybe it'll be helpful for, for, for them to hear <laughs> how, how it's not, it's not that great for us at, at times either, but we, d it is a good acknowledgement and we, we feel for you if you're, if you feel isolated or lonely and, um, we want to encourage you to do whatever you can to, to break out of that. And I know I, I can imagine that, that might be difficult at times to like, to pick up the video chat and to initiate, I don't know. And maybe more for guys, um, to say, Hey, I'm, you mean I'm just FaceTiming you because I feel lonely. You know, it's not the type of thing that what i I didn't feel like that was a thing as a guy that I would give myself permission to say, uh, years back. Yeah. Good acknowledgement. Um, so I, I found a couple of articles that I think speak to this. I, you know, w one of the things that's happening, of course, is couples who did not, who have never spent this much time together are now spending this much time together. Yeah. And the question is, what is that going to do for relationships? What is that doing for families? I mean, when you think about uh, our situation, which I think is probably a pretty typical situation in in the world and in America is that a lot of dads are spending a lot more time at home than they normally would. And, uh, and this is the, I mean, this I'm, isn't just dads. It's it, it, working moms. It's, yeah. Working moms. Any, any, anybody who is spent a lot of time traditionally outside of the house uh, is suddenly there. And it's like one of those, if you think about when you go on vacation, and we've talked about this dynamic before, it, it, when you go on vacation, even with the distractions of vacation, being in a foreign land of some kind, yeah, uh, having a schedule, having a pool that you could lounge next to and stuff like that, even with all those amenities, still by the end of a week-long vacation, most people are, are like, I got to get away from my family. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, but we're all on extended vacations of indefinite length, and we don't have we actually have the most familiar surroundings, and we don't have an option to really experience any in our most of our neighborhoods are becoming much more familiar. I mean, we've I've, I've walked, I could draw you a map of my neighborhood at this point. And it doesn't actually sound impressive, but okay. <laughs> you couldn't draw a map of your neighborhood before this. Okay, that's uh, fine. That's no judgment. No, I mean, have you been in, you, 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 my neighborhood's got a lot of weird streets and they're not, there's no system. It's not a grid. And so I'm just saying that now I feel like I, there, I've been on streets that are less than a mile away that I was like, never been on this street, never been on this street. I've been on all the streets now, multiple times. But I'm just saying that the level of familiarity with our family and our surroundings is it an all-time high? Oh, yeah. And it's creating some different dynamics. There's an article uh, in the... Uh, well, I've seen a few articles that talk about, like, what's going to happen? Is there going to be a coronavirus baby boom? Because all these couples are at home together and everybody's having sex. Like, ooh, oh, it's just a I sex I know how babies are made. And then the other theory is, well, actually, there's going to be a boom in divorces. I think most likely you're going to see both of those things uh, happening, hopefully not in the same families, <laughs> together at the same time. Yeah, hopefully I, they're happening as separate families. I think there was the honeymoon phase of quarantine that was like, hey, let's let's sort the mail. This will be fun. Right. And then a few weeks later, it's like, what are you, 
We don't have any mail. Right. I, I checked the mailbox and I walked straight from the mailbox to the recycle bin because everything that was sent was junk. For those of you who may be confused or you're maybe you're a new listener to Ear Biscuits. Thank you. We can have inside biscuits, jokes. Don't explain it. I think I have to explain it because I care about those people. Sorting the mail is a euphemism only on this podcast for sexual intercourse. I know how babies don't e- are made. Don't ask us how that happened, but it did. Um, it let me read you from an article. In my bedroom, ironically. Uh, this is an article in the New York Post, uh, which is not typically a publication that I uh, frequent. But they had a, an article about the surge in divorces. Cooped up New Yorkers are flooding lawyer phone lines with divorce inquiries uh, with an avalanche of filings expected once the courts reopen. People are realizing that they can't stand each other, said Manhattan lawyer Suzanne Kimberly Bracker, who, like many in her field, has already seen a coronavirus divorce uptick. In the middle of the night, I got a call from a client who now realizes she has nothing in common with her husband but the children and how he knows nothing about the children. <laughs> so it's like, and and this is something that, I, again, this is sort of a, stereotypical tropey thing but you got the, the the dude who's been off at the jo- his job and then he comes back home and he is like oh now i've got to do something i've got to engage with the kids more than just like hey i'm home dad's home let's shoot some basketball for 30 minutes and that makes me a great dad but you know what i'm saying it's like yeah. now you're kind of expected and and a lot of people are uh are continuing to do their jobs from home, which can be a little bit disruptive. I mean, even right now, we're sitting here in the middle of our homes, making everybody else be relatively quiet while we do this. Yeah, typically Lily will will roll out of bed and she'll walk in here and she'll see me doing this. And then she will just like slump over, roll her eyes, go back into her bedroom because she she realizes she can't make breakfast because it makes too much noise. And I told her she could t- tiptoe around and make the breakfast, but you know what? She's she's being ultra uh, ultra sensitive. Uh, I mean, not sensitive, but considerate, and she's not doing it. But it's like, yeah. So m- our work lives coming home is a severe inconvenience to our families. You're in the freaking middle of your living room. If somebody wanted to watch TV this morning, that ain't happening. There's to other the- televisions. Well, it wouldn't be on the big one on your left. Exactly. Um- yeah, it, and and one of the things that's happening too is I think that a lot of people are seeing their working parent or their working spouse in work mode in a way that they haven't. This mm-hmm. article from the Washington Post, uh, this woman Laura Norkin, deputy editor of In Style magazine, uh, <laughs> tweeted a funny thing about quarantining is hearing your partner in full work mode for the first time, mm-hmm. like. I'm married to a let's circle back guy. Who knew? <laughs> it's like, it's like, let's circle you, back oh, on that. I've um, never heard somebody use that. We in can my take own this home. offline and then circle back on it later. And then we can close the loop when we've taken the pen out of it. But for now, we're putting the pen in it. Put a pen now, in I it. Now, I will say there, there are some positives from this. So, as you know, we have our company wide meeting and there's not really a place in my house to get away even when you go i go into the most private of places which would be our little guest bedroom yeah the the crack under the door is like an inch so you can hear anything everything is happening in there and jesse was working outside on her computer right outside the room yeah and we had our meeting you know we're having every two weeks where everybody at mythical gets on a video chat and we talk about business and also just kind of connect with one another and she, I come out of the door, and she was like, "You sound like a good boss." <laughs> That's nice. You sound like she a good like, boss. You sound like a nice, nice boss. She surprised. And I was like, "Oh, thank you." I think she. I. I think that she knows that I'm not. You know, neither of us are those typical like chew your head off bosses. That's just not in our character or disposition. Uh, but I think I think listening in on the meeting and like again just hearing my side of it, um, 
So she didn't she didn't come out. I didn't come out and she said, oh, you're a circle back guy. She's like, oh, you're a nice boss. I was like, well, good. Yeah, I'm going to get a mug that says I'm a nice boss. As I'm setting things up for Good Mythical Morning or for for this show, like I noticed Christy was home to be, she would like look at me and like, She's like assessing me. She's like, I even, even just right before we started recording, she like comes right over the camera. She's like, pokes her head around from the kitchen. She's like, are you okay? Now that's a loaded <laughs> question. There's a little more to it are that I can okay? get into a little bit, but I'm like, I'm fine. She was like, you look pale. I'm like, what I'm thinking is I get stressed out right before I do something, especially when there's all these people and groceries came in this morning again. Oh, good law. Oh, that, that, that'll throw Don't you get off. me going. I'm like, yeah, I'm pale. I get pale before I start anything because I'm freaking, I'm, I'm stress spiking. And then I get my robe on and I sit down. And I'm like, all right, all right. And then I, I mellow out a little bit and I get in the zone, the auto zone. But like, she's like, not a sponsor. You are so worked up. I'm like, yeah, I get worked up. That's why it's called work. I get up for it. <laughs> So I didn't get a, you're a good boss, but she's not listening in on our uh, Oh, I've got another thing. All too. hands meeting, as we used to call it at IBM. Now, before we before we kind of before this takes a trip to the dark side, <laughs> I, I do. I'm gonna talk about a lot of the positives because I think that this has been a really positive time for our family in a lot of ways. Um I made a little list here so I wouldn't forget. Uh now Jesse and I had a date night before where we would go out once a week. But we're continuing to do that. You know, date night is our takeout night where we we get some takeout and we send the children away. They can be anywhere, but anywhere near us. And, uh, you know, we put on some music, change the lighting a little bit. And uh, it's still in the kitchen. I'm not talking about the bedroom yet. Okay. And uh, that's where it sorting begins. mail happening. And, uh, you know, we just have a nice dinner and we act, we we talk about the the nature of our relationship. Actually, talk about how we talk. You know, I think yeah. that's been good. Uh, we got our family movie night that we do every Friday night, where we all sit down and try to agree on a movie, which has been going pretty well. Really, watched Tombstone the other night. That was a hit. Mm-hmm. Um, Val Kilmer's Not on your list, performance, but- one of the best ever. Kurt Russell, a little uneven acting in that movie, but he's Kurt Russell. Um, We're also, like you, we're watching Survivor. That's something the family is connected on. Locke and I have our horror movie night on Saturday nights. Shepard and I are starting uh, an art project based on uh, the golden ratio, Fibonacci numbers. And um, we are uh, playing horse and having putting contests. And there's a lot of like family interaction that's happening at a higher volume that has been great. But of course, with all that interaction, with the good comes the bad. Yeah, we've had, I mean, you know how the Neils are. We like to stay hydrated. And when we go in on something, we go in deep. We go in hard. Boy, that sounded weird. <laughs> um, we, we really, we fully commit to something. And there's a, there, there's a dark side to that. Like, um, we started watching Survivor, and like as we've discussed before, we started at season seventeen because I knew that I need. If everyone got hooked on it, and we got aligned on this thing. We needed a whole bunch of seasons to just start binging through because we wouldn't want. We just want to keep going down that rabbit hole. Um, so now we're over halfway through season eighteen, and basic everybody's so excited about it. It aligns us. It's a it's a beautiful thing. It's kind of magical. That everyone loves it. And it's the, lately, it's the only thing we've been willing to do together. Like, there's, so here I am already going to the dark side. Like, <laughs> I mean, yesterday, I'm freaking, I'm feeling, uh, we're doing an AMA for the, uh, for the Mythical Society peeps. And I guess to them, it just looks like I'm, I'm typing on my computer. It doesn't, I'm not filming anything. And, they're outside they're outside in the garage playing ping pong which that's another thing that we that we do but now that's become a source of contention well, I didn't finish the survivor thought the thought is survivor is the only thing that we that we end up doing every single night so we don't have enough variety and it's like we watch the survivor every night every single night and it's too much it's a problem yeah 
And then, you know, we're not having enough other positive outlets as a family. So I'm doing the AMA and they're outside playing ping pong. And then this is not the first nor the second time this has happened in the past three days. But all of a sudden I hear, I hear Lando screaming. And a lot of times when he's screaming, he's screaming, delete it. Delete it. De what? Delete it. And he comes in here and he's, he runs to me and he's like, dad, Lincoln took video of me and he won't delete it. And I'm like, what's he gonna do? Is he gonna post it online? He's like, he might. I was like, has he ever done that? And then Lincoln walks in and he has this like Lincoln grin on his face. He thinks <laughs> he is enjoying this moment. This is what he's yeah. doing it for. To, to drive brother. him crazy. You, you would have thought that Lincoln filmed Lando confessing to a murder. You know, it's like that that's the level of intensity. And then the more that Lincoln just kind of grins at him, the more he just goes ballistic. And <clears throat> I get to a point where I'm like, and that three hours later, I'm getting ready. I'm queuing up Survivor. Okay, finally we can have our positive time together. We can agree on this. We can at least all be in the same room, but not at each other's throats. And I'm like, they, kept, they wouldn't come and they wouldn't come. So I've, done, I've got this technique where I start playing Survivor really loud. And then they'll like stop what they're doing and they'll all run in. They'll get off the phones or whatever and run in. Well, this time, instead of that happening, it was delete it, delete <laughs> it. And they ran in and you know what? Without thinking about it, I was like, I don't want to hear it. You two go back out of the room and handle it. And then they stood there, kind of like bum fuzzled. And I was like, go out of the room and handle it. And I looked at Christy, who I was talking with before they came in. And she was <laughs> like, she had this disappointed look on her face. At me? Yeah. Yeah. And then the boys left. And I'm like, what were you saying? <laughs> um, you know, it's uh, like at a certain point, the but the it, the button's been pushed so much that it it won't pop back up. You know that you know that type of button where it's like it gets oh, pushed yeah. in and then it gets lodged underneath something. So it's like, or you think that the button popped back up, but really it like you push it and instead of it popping back up, you push it and then you watch it. And yeah, you're like, oh, I don't think the buttons come. And then all of a sudden, it starts to come back up a little bit, and then stops. That happens with literally every keyboard that we put in our kitchen, because Jelly. no matter how many times I I tell my kids to wash their hands before they type, they don't, they won't. So we go through like one Apple Magic keyboard every seven months. You talk about being being a good Just boss. Part of my budget. And the way that we talk to our employees, sometimes it's like it gets familial. There's a good level of family atmosphere and team atmosphere. But if I talk, man, I'm just, I'm just being honest. There's a, there's, you'd be shocked if you saw, <laughs> it, you know, so, the, some of the things that come that I exude, especially in this well, time. Well, okay, I, I, and, and to support you in this. I've already said that I I'm mean, squeezed my kids, but that was a joke. Well, but in terms of the um, losing it and yelling, um, <sighs> That and, and first of all, there's people who are in families where that doesn't ever happen, um, right? And uh, great, it's great, it's great for you. <laughs> and also, you may be shocked uh, when you hear, "Oh, you guys, yeah, you got yell at your children." Because I, I, I know, I know that my kids have friends whose parents never yell at them, and that's just not that's not our family. I'm not proud of it. It's just it's the way that it's kind of the way that we are. Um. And like Jesse will be working with Shepard, kind of getting him to do. Now, again, she's homeschooled the kids forever. Uh, and they've only been in school for like three years or now. So, but of course, she thought she was done. And this, and now everybody's homeschooling, right? And they're doing the distance learning thing, but. <clears throat> With Shepard, especially, that does that doesn't mean that he's just going to do do the work. You you got to stay with him and make him do the work, keep him from being distracted. And Jesse is more patient 
than me and tries to engage with him in a fruitful way. Yeah, we've, we've both way. married much better people than we are. And that's a wonderful yeah, thing and, for us. And, th- and then she will, but then, you know, I'll come out of a meeting or a podcast or whatever I happen to be doing and she'll say, your turn. Mm. When this is not something that ha- happens when I'm at work, but when I'm at home working, it does happen on a regular basis. And then I'll go in there and I'll kind of enter into the situation with Shepard with some patience at the beginning that is exhausted. It's, I think my patient's tank needs to be repaired. It has several leaks. Um, and as soon as I fill it up, Shepard finds a way to like pull the pull the plugs out and... I'm 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 basically I've gone from trying to work with him to just telling him just b- basically shaming him right that I, that's ultimately what yelling at somebody does is it, it try you're trying to use shame to get them to do it and it, I know it's not effective when when I'm doing it, I know it's not effective but that's what I end up resorting to in my very mind very quickly and you, and it, and your tank gets smaller and smaller and yeah. smaller the more time that you spend together. In my mind, I'm thinking, and I did once, once the, I did tell Chrissy at that point, I was like, I figured this was worth a shot. After I said, just resolve it yourself, handle it. And they left the room and I was like, what were we talking about? And then I was like, yeah, I, I yelled in a calculated way because <laughs> I want, because uh, I, we we don't yell that often. I mean, it's not something. I mean, there are family cultures where, like, little subcultures of families where they where they yell more, and it's just like everybody's got a thick skin when it comes to that, and it's a it's a form of communication, and everybody everybody knows how to handle it, and it's and it. I, I don't think it's absolutely a horrible thing to raise your voice. I think that there are, are I would imagine that there's home climates where it it can just be you can be expressive but but it's it very quickly goes to a danger zone and that's that that's what we feel in our house and so the goal is you know to always remain in control and not to raise your voice i mean we all agree on that over here and that's that's i wouldn't put that standard on anybody else cuz i'm not a i'm not a psychologist but for me that's that's where we've landed so it does immediately feel like a failure when I do yell. Um, and But I thought it was worth a shot for me to say, this is a calculated yell for me to express how much of an impact this ongoing quarrel has on me. It's like, oh, dad must feel strongly about this. This is impacting him. It yeah. did. I mean, it wasn't that compelling of an argument, but I tried. Did it work? No, it wasn't that Christy was mad at me. I mean, we just, you know, she helped me talk through it, and then like I was like, "No, did 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 they did they resolve their conflict oh. and come back in?" Yeah. Well, I didn't hear it anymore. They shut up. Which again, <laughs> that was my goal. It was like stop impacting my quality of life. It was that selfish stance of. I don't care. As long as you guys can shut up somewhere else and I don't hear it, I will be fine. But then later on, um, we called him back in there and we had a we had a 10 minute discussion that was more like, hey, how do we get how do we get to the bottom of this? Now, in retrospect, I might could have added an apology about like losing my losing my cool and raising my voice. And uh, especially when you make the point about shaming, because I think that's a good point. Um, maybe I'll revisit that, but we at least had a constructive conversation about how they can own what they're doing and what their motives are. And because Lincoln's doing it on purpose, and now Lando's developing this coping mechanism of yelling at him. And this is a new thing, so it's like trying to get to the bottom of that. But I mean, the, and this came at the end of a of a long day. I mean, at the beginning of the day, we're we're in a different way than Shepard, but we're having. We're just trying to get Lincoln to be more motivated to do the schoolwork. It's very difficult to 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 do schoolwork in this environment. And he he comes in this morning, he's like, Mom, Dad, I've done some research. And I'm like, I perk up. I'm like, 
my boy's done research. <laughs> this is great. I immediately felt proud. I was like, I've never heard him use that phrase before. I've done some <laughs> research. And he says, uh, the LA Unified School District says that the grades that you have when you left for quarantine, they can't make your grade lower than that. So I'm not going to do any more schoolwork. I was like, well, this took a turn. And then Christy was like, who told you this? It's like, yeah, well, that's a high school rumor. Like, man. Well, my friends, my friends aren't doing their work because they, they said that's true. And then she's like, first of all, we're not in the LA Unified School District. <laughs> so you need to do more research. And so then, so we, I mean, we were on and off all day. We were kind of bantering, getting into that. And then Lando and him are at each other's throats because I won't let them be on screens all day. And I force them to go outside and play together. And then they come in at each other's throats. And, you know, Lily had her own, you know, I'm not going to tell Lily's story on here, but there was something that L Lily suffered a disappointment. Like there was, some, there, she got some disappointing news, something she was looking forward to. Uh, it went the other way. And this was like months of looking forward to getting this news. Uh, and so it was kind of, it was a bit shattering for for Christy and I as well as for her, you know? So it's like, that was also yesterday. Um, so it's, you know, you, ha you have these ideas that like things are, you know, and, and on previous podcasts, we, we talk about this mindset of like seeing things as an opportunity and um, not being Pollyanna about how things are going in the world or even in our homes, but feeling like, okay, you know what? We can find the silver lining. We can, we can see the opportunities in this. We can, like the things that you listed out and then knowing at the end of this that we're going to see it as a, a precious time because we do love each other. And thank goodness we, we care about each other and we're not, you know, th there's a lot of people who A, don't have anybody or they, they're like on the, a they're on the outs of a relationship or they were about to break up or like, huh. there's lots of more nightmare situations than the ones we're in. We're, we've got it really great with our families. Um, but it just gets to you, man, you know? Um, well, and I think that it's, I mean, I do think it's important to recognize that because I think you could say something, and I'm sure someone has written something like this, where it's like, it's not that being cooped up in your home is going to cause a divorce. It's that being cooped up in your home is going to reveal the reality of how you actually, whether or not you actually connect. That's the kind of BS that somebody would say. Because the fact is, is that regardless of the nature of your relationship, regardless of how healthy it is, you, this is going to be difficult for almost everyone. And that doesn't mean that you should break up, you should get a divorce, or you're not compatible. Now, there could uh, that doesn't also doesn't mean that, you know, there could, will be some real discovery and real discussion during this time that you realize that you got some things to work on, or maybe you do realize that you've come to an impasse that you can't get through. But I think it's helpful to hear that it's a it's incredibly normal to respond to this situation in a negative way uh, and have to resist, you know, being selfish and being self interested and 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 also think that there is some depending on your personality. I mean, for me as an introvert, it's like it's not a negative thing when I think I got to get away from these people. That doesn't make me a bad person. It doesn't make them bad people. It <clears throat> yeah. just means that the redster needs to eject her himself <laughs> from this situation right. and go on a solo walk. In fact, Jesse and I were talking about this yesterday because Jesse is a it, it, one of the biggest differences between the two of us. We have so many things in common. We enjoy so many things. We connect in a lot of different ways. But she is a hyper extrovert, and I'm an I'm not a hyper introvert. Mm -hmm. I kind of present as an extrovert to most people who get to know me for the first time, but in reality, I'm energized by being alone. So I'm an introvert. But so 
when I talk about things like, I'm going to go work out. She, like first week she was like, you want to work out together? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't want to work out together for like seven reasons. The least of which being that we're not going to do the same stuff in the workout. But the main reason being um, that this, it, it's a time for me. Like I put on, I listen to a book. You know, I don't I don't listen to like pump up music when I work out. I listen to books on tape, right? And when I walk around the neighborhood by myself, I listen to I listen as well. It's like you got a tape that, you got that, a walkman, a tape a cassette tape. <laughs> I just have a, you know, I've just got earphones and uh, an iPhone. But yeah, it's your uh, time but, and you need you need that I recharging. Need well, and even it's a day or yesterday when you know, our our days right now are consist of doing a, something in the morning and something in the afternoon that's work-related typically, right? Every weekday. And even something as simple as like, okay, let's record two episodes of Good Mythical Morning today. Like there's been some days where we've recorded one in the morning and one in the evening or one in the afternoon. And you would think, oh, two episodes of GMM, like that's, what else you got going on? That's an easy day, but the setup and then the getting it all right and then the meeting before and then yeah, doing it yeah. and then the taking the thumbnails and then uploading the footage. Before you know it, you've taken all day to shoot two episodes of GMM. And that is not me uh, time. I, right, exactly. But I had like a little window in between uh, the other day and I said, I'm going to take a walk by myself. It was sunny outside. I was like, I'm going to take a walk by myself. And then Jesse said, okay. And then she told me, this morning, she was like, when you said that, because we were talking about this dynamic before we recorded this, she said, you know, my instinct is to be like, well, I want to go on a walk with you. Like, if you're going to go on a walk, let's go together. But she's like, no, I stopped and realized that, no, that that's, that's what he, that's what he needs. That's good for him. And it's not, he's not saying anything about me. Like she, she was like, that's not saying anything about her that I need to get away from her. It doesn't, it's saying more about me. Yeah. It reminds it me of the her. same principle, but Christy made a comment to me at the at the end of the night last night after we had gotten through Survivor and then I think there was I there was still I said something sarcastic while everyone was going off to bed and um, she said you know what I think the only person that doesn't annoy you is you <laughs> she said and then she turned to the whole family she was like you know what I think your dad might need to let, like to camp in the backyard. You might need to hmm. do a little like camping time by himself. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, first of all, all right, tip for tat. I was sarcastic, so I message received and I laughed, and you know it. It, it broke the tension. You know, it, it didn't. It didn't escalate. It de. She knew how to. She was doing that to de-escalate, and it worked. But um. Yeah, I, I I think we're, I think that was her observation. We're coming to grips with that too. That like, I mean, I'm I've been getting up an hour or an hour and a half before everybody else, and I've been I've been meditating. I mean, I'm today was thirty days in a row I've meditated. Wow. Yes, yeah, so it's like it th that uh, that it keeps a record of it on the app, so it motivates me to do it. Like I said, but I don't know. It's not enough. I don't know. It's like uh, I'm. I still suck at meditating, by the way. So I'm not bragging. It's just like yeah. I think I am getting I, insights, but um, insights into myself and and how to how to cope. But I'm not quite engaging those lessons enough. But you know, I, th the other thing I haven't mentioned yet, as far as relating to Christy goes, I think it's been a real challenge. And you know this that Christy's been sick for over two weeks. And um, it was a, it was just a, a mild fever every day for for the past over two weeks that hasn't broken a hundred, but when it's like that for days and days and days and weeks, it, you know, she's been in conversation with her doctor, um, and there's been like stomach issues, um, so loss of appetite, so she's lost over ten pounds because she hasn't been able to eat and like um, with diarrhea. And then, but those are the only symptoms. So the doctor was saying, well, that's, you know, there's COVID is, was weird. 
and it's it yeah. manifests in different ways of different people, but they didn't think that's what it was. But then finally, after a week and a half, I took her to get the test, uh, like a drive through test. And um, I got to say, I, I got a thrill out of her taking the test because, uh, you know, that it's like a big it's like, it's like a Q-tip, pipe right? cleaner it's like a freaking pipe cleaner that's like that long and then they 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 said when you drive you'll drive up and you can stay in your car and we'll do the throat swab and so christy was thinking it was a throat swab but the way that they access the throat is through the nose and oh, so I, she, I knew this she didn't know it so and I didn't know for sure she didn't know it until I saw the look on her face as it started to happen. The dude reaches in. He's like, now I'm going to count five seconds. It's going to feel a lot longer than five seconds, but I'm just going to count. And then she, they, the guy took the pipe cleaner, put it in her nose. Her eyes got huge. Her feet started beating the floorboard of the car. And it, she said that it went all – she said, if I would have opened my mouth and looked at you – you would have seen the thing go go past my throat down there and, and start. And then he's 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 counting to five and he's twisting it. Yeah. And then he's pulling it out. And <laughs> I'm sorry I, that I got a I got a kick out of her being so surprised, not because it hurt, because it was uncomfortable. It I wouldn't say it hurt. It did hurt, but it was more well, it's uncomfortable. It's just like when. Uh- it's uh well you you've experienced we both have experienced it because yeah. when you got your uh when we went to the plastic surgeon to do the commercial and he showed you how to look down at your throat but well, they did the same thing to me at the ENT when I was having some throat issues a couple of years ago and it's like again it goes through the nose and I have a deviated septum in my right nostril like you can't even, you can't get in there and the left nostril is open but prone to bleeding so it's like I just I don't want to have to get tested. <laughs> I hope they come up with, I want one of the less invasive ones. Um, Two days later, we got the results back. They were negative. Um, She was still having the symptoms. And, I mean, she started to develop um, pain in her chest. Like, it was like, I I think I'm having trouble breathing. And um, I, I was... She had had a, that similar symptom earlier in the year, uh, and she got checked out for that. And we thought there might be something; it might be a, a heart thing or something. She got all checked out, and she was fine. We realized that like anxiety was driving a lot of her symptoms at the time. And then I was making the point that those, I think, anxiety might be manifesting this symptom now because even though your test was negative, the doctor did happen to mention that it's possible to have a false negative, that she could have COVID. Mm -hmm. But that, Mm -hmm. and they said, if you start to have breathing problems, you need to call us and then we might need to take decisive action. And then I observed that she started to say that she was having breathing problems. She woke up in the middle of the night. I woke up, um, three nights ago at like 3.30 in the morning and she was having a panic attack. But she didn't know if she just couldn't breathe. And it's it was, I don't, I don't, I mean, I was kind of groggy. I'm not the most supportive at 4 a.m. I was, you know, but I was, I was trying to be supportive. But I mean, ultimately she, yesterday she went in for a uh, a lung x-ray just to, for, so the doctor could make sure that she didn't have it. We didn't go to the emergency room that night. I kind of talked her down and helped her calm down. But then the next morning, which was yesterday, she went in. Um, the, the test results for that were totally clear. Her lungs are totally fine, which is more support that, you know, this is, I don't know if I would say psychosomatic, maybe that is the right term, but, um, it's caused by her heightened anxiety um, associated with, you know, being in this pandemic where here's the connection for her, you know, over three years ago, and she's told this story on Science Mike's, Science Mike's podcast about how she, you know, she hit her head. She's get, she had the concussion. She still suffers from post-concussion syndrome. But the thing that I think we're coming to grips with is that because of that, 
she's suffering from PTSD. She now, on a subconscious level, believes that if something so, uh, if the odds are so low for something like her hitting a, hurting her head on a limb, walking into the Trader Joe's, can then three years later have a dramatic and drastic impact on her life, then, well, when this virus starts sweeping through town, she's going to get it. You know, she just knows it, you know, on a, like, that's what, that's the survival technique that, that I think she's learned. And again, I mean, so, you know, it's, it's been difficult, you know, with a couple of days of a flare up of symptoms and anxiety, like we can work together, but like when it, when it's like over two weeks, I mean, it's, it starts to become very difficult to, um, to be empathetic, you know, because it's frustrating. It's very frustrating for me to, because I feel like I don't have the magic words to get through to her or I don't have the techniques to fix her. And, and she's not asking for that from me. And, you know, she's asking for an open ear and she's asking for, I think she wants, she wants empathy and she just wants me to be there for her as she goes through this and be supportive because she does have a therapist. She does have a, br a brain doctor. She does have a normal doctor. She has, and she has other friends that provide a support structure too. So it's like, she doesn't need everything from me. I don't need to be the silver bullet. But it's, it, it get, it, with every day, it gets increasingly more difficult, especially when I see that her symptoms are getting better, um, except for the anxiety, you know? So it's, um, and she gave me permission to talk about this, by the way. Because she was like, what are you going to talk about on your biscuits? And I was like, we're going to talk about relational dynamics. She was like, you know, you can, you can talk about this because, and I applaud her for it, that like the things that I'm sharing are not things to be embarrassed about. They're actual conditions that people suffer from, whether it's depression, anxiety, post-concussion syndrome, uh, all types of silent illnesses. Um, you know, I, I think she encouraged me to share this story because just to remove that stigma. But, you know... Well, and, and I, I, can, I can speak on behalf of hypochondriacs everywhere, which I think people would relate to. Mm -hmm. And I talked to my dad, who... My dad is like me and presents himself as invincible. Um, but it's like, okay, the very first... So I, I went a long time in, in, in my life without thinking that... Not believing... Like I refuse to believe that you could feel something physical in your body and it not be real. Like, but in the past 10 years, I have felt so many specific things, injuries and sicknesses, and 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 then it turns out to not be anything. And it's and and so with the coronavirus, the first week that we were home, I swear to you. Because I was consuming so much news, I had pain. I had legitimate pain in my chest, and I kept telling Jesse, "I was like, I think I got it." I was like, "I don't have any other symptoms, but like when I breathe in, like it hurt my chest hurts." So I was like, "Literally, I can point to it. It's hurting right here, and it's hurting right here." And I was like, "And it comes and it goes, and I've had it for a week." And then I talked to my dad, and he was, and he was like. I've had coronavirus 20 times since this whole thing started. Like he, he, <laughs> he was he he was like it's just in our genes to for it to manifest itself in that way. So, I mean, I it doesn't mean you're crazy. It, it's I think it's it's very normal and you can actually and I've had a I've had a couple I'm not, of hey, panic I'm attacks. not crazy. You're saying it doesn't mean that my wife is crazy. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh there, there, there's a couple of like, that, and that whole feeling like you can't breathe thing, and like there's a couple of times in the past few weeks that I've woken up in the middle of the night and I've been like, I think I'm, sh I think I'm not getting a full breath. And, it, and the, the moment that you think that, it's very difficult to get out of it. it it's very difficult yeah. to get out of it. And it's, and again, I'm not, and I'm not telling people that they should ignore their symptoms. I, I do think that for me, a lot of times doing what Christy did and like going and getting the x-ray, 
so you can be told definitively. Sometimes you do need that. You need that, like, oh no, this there's nothing, there's actually nothing wrong with you because hypochondriacs like me will keep thinking like, yeah, you're just telling me there's nothing wrong with me, but in reality there is, and you just don't want me to think about it. Mm-hmm. You know, and sometimes you do have to go to that place. It can get to a place where you, you're you're having to have all these things confirmed all the time, but I just say that as somebody who ha- hasn't had nearly the issue, the, you know, the struggle that Christy has had, and I haven't had the post-concussion syndrome or anything like that, but I am a hypochondriac, and I have thought that I had coronavirus already, and, it's and very, I was sure of it. It's just so difficult to be empathetic because I'm not great at it in general, but then... And I, I think when we were talking about our highlights from the year, I might have talked about the dynamic of, I end up, I'm not sure, but I'll, whenever she says, I'm, I'm concerned about this, whether it's a physical symptoms related to this or it's related to the kids or something else, whenever she says, she expresses anxiety towards something, my knee-jerk reaction without actually hearing her is to just minimize or try to make it disappear entirely, like to dismiss her her instincts, you know, or her, her concerns. And, you know, I told her it's like a, you know, at a certain point, if something's really concerned, she'd be like, you don't seem concerned at all. And I'm like, one time I was like, you know, you cry, if you cry wolf too many times, then the, 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 sh- the farmer's not going to come, or I don't know how the story goes. And that was not a, that was not a sensitive thing to say, but it was an honest thing. That like it's it is a struggle to continue to hear her and to to empathize with her when I it's so foreign to my own experience that like I you know I f- I think I I live with my I'm. I live with my head in the clouds sometimes, maybe. It's, I think, how she feels about me because we're, our experience is so different in this way. And it's, so it's, and it's, but it's very frustrating to not to be able to fix it. And then to, and then whenever I start to say, well, that's not what I need to do. I just need to be there. Then it's like, it's hard to access the, the energy to, because it's against my instincts to interact with her in that way. And so, you know, after over two weeks of that, it's like, again, that was the that was the last thing over the past two days that was like, okay, this is this is difficult. Um, you know, I w- j- just to kind of just to kind of close the loop on it, what was the corporate saying? Circle, circle back. I don't want to have to circle back on this later, so let's close the loop now. You know, it's th- this morning. I I took my meditative time to kind of think more about about her and about just to to have an an exercise in empathy. <clears throat> and then afterward, it you know it gave me the capacity to to go upstairs and to apologize for you know how I've I wore my frustration on my sleeve and. Um, there was no yelling with Christy, you know, it wasn't like that. <laughs> it was, it was more of like a, this, just this, just, you could, you could just sense the frustration and it, and it seemed like annoyance, you know, but I think we were, you know, we were about to have a good conversation this morning and clear the air about that. And, you know, I know that she is, she's pulling on resources and seeing ways that she can, um, uh, you know, there's additional treatments and therapies and things like that that will help her through this, that it's not, and, and I can be, I can be there to help her, help her wade through that stuff. But I mean, I I know she's in that process too. So we're not stuck and we're not. um, And so we had a moment, we had a good moment this morning where it was like kind of a reconnection and and just being honest. And so that's the, just to close the loop on that, but well, yeah, and I would say, you know, given the, there's a lot of things about this particular situation um, and the things that we continue to read about the virus that make it very 
it's a specifically difficult situation for people who are hypochondriacs because the virus, the symptoms are so, like, they don't know anything about it. It's like yeah. they, they, you you read the one article and it's like, okay, well, it seems that it presents this way in most people, but and for some people it's just like this. And then some people all of a sudden they go, they, there's all these little things that I think people who write these articles, and again, they're not, you don't, when you're writing about it, you don't have hypochondriacs in mind. And actually hypochondriacs need to learn how to deal with, I say this as a hypochondriac, you need to be able to engage with information in a way that doesn't immediately make me think that I have it. Um, but it's very difficult because it manifests itself in so many different ways and we've been told it's super contagious and um, you're out of your normal routine. You got a lot, of, all, all a lot of us are doing is just reading the news and sitting around and thinking. <laughs> and it's like, that's good, that could be a really bad combination. So I do, I do think it's important that, and again, I, for the longest time, I just thought, I thought that my mom was a hypochondriac and I was like, well, that's not me. And then I and then I realized, no, you know what? Oh, actually, no, I am. And now I'm talking to my dad. I'm like, oh, and also my dad is. It's like <laughs> we 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 all have this tendency to immediately kind of internalize it. So I just think that um, it's okay. It doesn't again. It doesn't make you abnormal. It's such a common thing, but it is important to. Um, realize it and address it. I mean, with me, I can, I got a therapist I can talk to about it. I think that that continues to be really important for a lot of people. There are resources. If you know, there's mental health resources that are available in this in very difficult time for a lot of people. And we just encourage you to continue to, to seek those out. I mean, not a sponsor. They were a sponsor at one time, but I know there's better help, you know, which is like, you basically can have a teleconference with somebody which is what we're all doing with our therapists right now anyway. Um, but there are, there are services like that. We just encourage you to, if you feel like you need somebody to talk to and you don't have somebody that you can talk to who will listen and be helpful. And again, like Link's talking about, it's like we're, none of us are trained in this and a lot of times don't know what to say and will say the wrong thing. Uh, finding somebody who can actually help you think through this and work through this in a healthy way is important. Yeah. So, and I, yeah, I, I'm, it's, it's helpful to talk about it here. I think it's, you know, it's with Chrissy's permission, it's calculated to talk about it here because I know a lot of people, like you said, relate to it. And um, yeah, it's like, we're not, you know, we're not in the business of pro providing answers, but we're in the business of just, being honest and like sharing our journey. So, uh, and it's, and it's helpful. It's helpful to me to do that. So I appreciate opening the, the can of the can of listen. It's your, it's your wreck. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to wreck a book that I listened to during my workouts and my strolls. Okay. And, uh, it's called underland by Robert McFarlane. And I didn't know about this Robert McFarlane guy. I didn't know he's, he's a writer uh, from the UK who sort of specializes in writing about nature. So it's, a, it's nonfiction, but the way that he writes about his experience, specifically in Underland, which I've always, you know, I'm fascinated with geology and also just underground things in general. But this is this incredible multi-year journey where he went underground, basically, into like caves and mines and underground systems under cities and met the people who know about these places and visited them himself and his way of kind of bringing you along for the ride, but it it also becomes a story about the earth and the environment and what's happening in the world. Um, top ten favorite books of all time. What like, I mean, and it's not is, even this it's is nonfiction. Yeah, wow. and again, this is not this isn't for everybody. Again, if but if you happen to be interested in that in the way that I describe that, if that piques your interest at all, there's nobody that I'm aware of 
who can write in a more compelling way, almost a spiritual way. There's a, like a spiritual experience in the way that he kind of approaches this stuff hmm. that it's, uh, again, it's been super meditative to like walk and listen to this, these stories about these people. Uh, and it's sort of like really tapped into my sense of adventure, which I kind of feel like I haven't really been feeding for a long time. We do a lot of crazy things. Our lives are pretty, we could do a lot of amazing things, but just this guy's commitment to going out into the world and then talking about it in a compelling way. Is so that's Underland. underland. Okay. Yeah, all one word. <clears throat> all right. Thanks for hanging out with us this week. Um, we'll speak at you again next week, and you know we love you. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.